Juan. Thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> um, my prayer and hope there is that through these scriptures, you guys like are um, get a little bit closer to God and just understand like, uh, His way and the message that He's trying to imply to you uh, through the scripture. Um, since I was reading chapter 12, I was like, man, like, what, what can I speak about? Or like too much prayer and thinking and just uh, studying. I'm like, I, we went through a lot of the things that were in there about um, a power book about rich people and thinking about what, uh, what is it that, that uh, kind of like uh, gets, gets to heaven or what is it that you got to do here. Um, talk about his hypocrisy, as you can see in the beginning of the chapters. Um, so I'm like, man, we haven't talked about, I mean, it's, it's kind of like topical, but Jesus talked about, about anxiety and what worries people. And um, as human beings, I mean, uh, I think myself, I, one of the biggest worries about providing for my family and, um, and, and just food and, and a home and stuff like that. So I'm sure like some of you guys have maybe have different worries and stuff like that. But I mean, um, through this passage, we're gonna see what Jesus tells us uh, how to deal, how to do it, how to deal with it, and um, and hopefully we get an understanding. Um, so um, we're just gonna start with a word of prayer, and um, I'm gonna do a little introduction. Uh, we're gonna go into the scriptures, and I have some questions and stuff like that, so you get you guys involved, and um, let's have a blessed time, right? Um, Father God, I just want to thank you for today, Lord. Uh, thank you that we have the privilege to uh, study your word and um, just meditate uh, and just get the grasp of, of what you're telling us, God. God, I just pray that uh, this time, God, you just um, reveal yourself through your word, um, that we understand a little bit more about you, God, and uh, what, what message you have for us, um, that we can apply it to ourselves, God, and then we can put it in practice, um, your teachings, Lord. Uh, in, your name, in your name we pray, amen. All right, so as you can see, guys, one of the questions that I want you guys to have in mind when you go through these scriptures, like, what is something that worries you? Like, what, what is something that makes you, that makes you worry? Um, and um, maybe some, something at the, maybe at the end of the class, you just start thinking about that and like, like man, I'm, I'm maybe I'm handling that situation or that problem in the wrong way or something like that. Or maybe you just got a reminder of what God already has taught you or, the, or something that you know already that maybe you're just going to be reminded of. Um, so as you s we said, uh, we're going to read Luke 12 through uh, verses 22 to 34. And before that, so uh, teaches, uh, Jesus was teaching uh, to the crowd, his disciples. They said there was a multitude of people. They didn't have a number. But he was teaching to them um, about the hypocrisy of, uh, of the Pharisees. Uh, he was also telling people about to fear God, not to fear uh, things that kill you, uh, your body and stuff. Um, he was also telling to confess Jesus um, to men. Um, and that's when somebody in the crowd, I mean, randomly, he asked him the question, like, oh, not question, but tells him, like, oh, Jesus, just tells my brother, tell my brother to split the inherit uh, that, I guess, the father left and stuff like that. So, I mean, we don't know what's the situation uh, in the Old Testament. Usually, like, the firstborn will get double the Harris or something like that. They will get the most part. And I guess he's telling Jesus, oh, tell him to split it. And that's when he explained to him that that it does, like, what you have here uh, in, in life, it doesn't consist of, of many things, of only possessions. <coughs> well, whatever you have is not what is important, right? And then he goes on to, to tell him the parable of the rich guy that he had so much crops that he wanted to... Uh, turn down the barn and make it a bigger one to even store more uh, to more so that whenever he's done he can say yeah I'm, I'm gonna take it easy and he says there like oh yeah I'm gonna uh, uh, take it easy uh, drink <coughs> eat and be happy that's what, what, what the, the, the common um, quote that comes like drink and be merry but um but God, God calls him a fool like he's a fool like um, um, the treasure and then that's what he says at the end there he who lays up treasures for himself is not rich towards God. That's why I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so, so that was what happened, and then Jesus jumps into this passage that we're gonna read. So, if I could have one person read Luke 12, 22 to 28, anyone want to volunteer? Uh, Luke 
12, 22 through 34. No, to 28, I'm sorry. That's oh, one yeah. half. Uh, right now? All right, yeah, well, and then after you, then a second person is going to finish at 29 to, through 34. And Justin. All right, I'm reading to 28, right? Yeah, yeah. so 22 th through 28. All right. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And by which of you, and which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow, neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then, this is 28, if then God so clothed the grass which today in the, which is today in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Go ahead, Justin. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need, that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart also. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so before we jump in, we're going to uh, go verse by verse. And um, I just got a question for you. What do you guys um, think or what do you know about uh, the meaning of anxiety? Like, what do you guys heard of or study or definition? yeah, the definition? What do, you, what do you think it is? Um, anxiety is kind of... Mm -hmm. Stressing over things that you can't control. Okay. Um, is usually it. Like when you're in a certain situation, sometimes it's like rational, where it's like, okay, uh, for example, like there's abuse that's going on in the home, right? And you have an anxiety because it's like you can't protect yourself. There's, there's uncontrollable. But then there's like irrational yeah. anxiety, like you're on the stage and you have like stage fright and you're, okay. you're freaking out. Yeah. So there's like the, there's, there's just different like, types. You just right. can't control. Like, okay. you, that's a commonality you see. Okay. Anyone else? I think of anxiety as being tied to fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's either a realistic fear or mm -hmm. an unrealistic fear, but whatever it is that it is, it causes you to be uncomfortable, yeah. nervous, and stressed. Or yeah. All right. So yeah. So like when I was uh, looking at the definition, listening to like different uh, uh, pastors' speech and stuff like that, <coughs> one of the things that uh, that they mentioned was like. Um, it's a situation that um, that it's uncertain that you don't know what's gonna happen, so that what that c cause worry within you and gen just give you nervousness and all that stuff. One thing that he mentioned was that um, to be careful. Some people think that being uh, eager is anxiety, but because like they say, oh, I can't wait. I'm not so anxious for Christmas. Uh, that's not it. It's you, you eager. You want Christmas to come because you want to, like a kid wants to know what gifts they're going to get and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yes, so that's one thing that he mentioned that like to be, don't, don't confuse anxiety with e eagerness because eagerness is something that you really want. Mm -hmm. Anx anxiety is something that, um, that's something that's going to, future is going to happen or a situation that you are uncertain or you have no idea what's going to happen and you just don't know what to do about it. Um, and um, when I was like studying and stuff like that, I said like in the USA alone, there's only like, there's a more than three million cases of anxiety per year. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the biggest things that happened through like everybody's life. And um, there's a lot of things that they medically, medicine, mm -hmm. uh, treatment, uh, <coughs> counselors that <coughs> does management of that. But I believe through these three scriptures, Jesus got the answer of what, what to do with it or like how to eliminate it. Mm -hmm. So we start in verse 22 and 23, right? Then he said to his disciple, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what will you eat, nor about, what, about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. 
What do you guys think about that? Like, oh, what do you, what do you get from that, from those two verses? That gives me anxiety. That gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. suddenly, oh. I'm, suddenly I'm stressed. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, what, what do you think he's trying to say here? Like, I mean, I, I, would, I, I have what I, but I want you guys maybe to share a little bit. If not, then I'll, I'll jump into what I, what I got and what, what I see is, mm-hmm. is more of like talk, talking about being comfortable with what you have and kind of getting more to remain that okay. way. Okay. Um, <coughs> especially in this society, definitely. But like you'll you'll buy the clothes that you want to buy, and mm-hmm. you want to make sure that you have enough food for your children or for yourself. You want to make yeah. sure you have this perfect job that will make sure that, that you're having a full income. And you put so much focus on those things. And that's kind of like why anxiety happens. People want to make sure that they're, you know, they have a job or yeah. like they're succeeding in their job or trying to progress in some way financially or monetarily. Okay. Um, but God, you know, God's kind of saying that that all that doesn't, you know, that okay. will bring you down. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you make or you know, that that will provide for God. Randy, I think it's um to me it speaks to how although thousands of years have gone by, not much has changed, mm-hmm. right? So. Yeah. I think the message is sort of like life is not about Mm -hmm. a race to see who has the most when they die, Mm -hmm. right? It's more about, you know, don't worry. God's going to provide for you. Share the blessings with those around you so that um, the world's a better place. I know it sounds like a little kumbaya, but that's sort of of the message I get from it. Yep. I mean, uh, straightforward there is just talking about like, physical material needs mm-hmm. for you to live you need food and you need shelter right you, you need clothes and stuff like that mm-hmm. so it's just talking about that those necessities that you need in life physically to live so um and w- one other thing that i see there is um the, w- the the reason why those things might cause anxiety is because christian believers may not understand god's uh, sovereign provision god Right, he it says that he set apart, he set you apart for himself, for his kingdom. And I think it's Hebrew 10 10, when he's trying to explain to the Jews of that time that, um, that, um, the Pharisees and, and, and the leaders they follow laws and stuff like that. But God set you apart through what Christ did for you. So if he did that, how come he, he would not so provide those things until your, until your end of time? Mm-hmm. If, if he has those plans for you, like. Uh, to save you and and why would he just do it and not provide these simple things that the physical need, things that you need to I guess um, f- follow his work make his make finish his work I think it's also important to understand here that he's talking to the disciples like he and he said to his disciples yes so he's talking to the believers mm-hmm. he's telling the body he's telling us his children all this entire passage is for you. Um, and and that's different than what he would perhaps say to the non-believer. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I just feel like, it, to me, after understanding, because Neil was telling me in the car, like, you know, he was talking to the believers, and I'm like, you know, we as his children get, like, special privilege. You know what I mean? Like, we, we extra mindful of us. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what this passage Go ahead. Okay, so in different levels, mm-hmm. um, I'm so sorry that I'm doing this. <laughs> and this is going to finish so fast. I learned when to just shut up. <laughs> I have no response to that. <laughs> um, so on different levels, you know, um, Okay, so America now, right? This is obviously, Randy was saying, we're so, uh, we're the, you know, the same things we're going through now when this was written. Well, I mean, especially in this country, I personally um, struggle a lot with this because of how long it took me to get saved. And so in that time, I w- things were imprinted into my mind so heavily, right? Okay, so we live in a time where what you have, what you eat, where you live, mm-hmm. what titles you have, um, all will make you, you know, in, 
in, mm-hmm. in this in this country particularly, you know, because then I've also lived in another country, which was the Dominican Republic, and you know what you have is not so much. It still it still is obviously, but it's just not so much, you know, what yeah. you have because so many people have left, you know, right. so they don't measure themselves that way. Um, but in this country particularly, though, you know what you wear, what you have, your sneakers, your bank account, your titles, you know, your education. It makes you, you know, and so when you don't have those things, and when it's been imprinted into your mind, mm-hmm. that that's what makes you. It's tough to leave that, and then, yeah. and then as a saved, as being saved, now that struggle, that struggle of the old man and the new man, mm-hmm. you knowing this, but yet, you know, that struggle of man, but I'm supposed to have this, you know, I should be having this by now. Um, for me, particularly, is a really big struggle, especially when you see that it just. Um, it just kind of puts it out there that how sinful we still are, even mm-hmm. saved, you know? And um, and then it's just, especially men, I mean, I know that, you know, men and women struggle with different things, and mm-hmm. it's just as a man, what your family, I mean, if you just take away what you will eat and say, just your family, now that I have two little girls, I'm like, don't worry about what your girls will eat, you know, don't worry about what they will wear, it's like, that doesn't even make any sense mm-hmm. to me. You know, it's just so hard to not worry, you know, but but as we keep reading, we know why we yeah, shouldn't worry. Yeah. But that's just what comes out in those verses. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else before I move on? Um, I also wanted to kind of take a problem and keep in mind that, like, there's some Christians out there that are not uh, as well off as we are. There's some people that yeah. are poor that don't have anything, hmm. you know, and um, like for example, you know, a brother in our church who doesn't have a place to sleep, you know, and, and go, or, or talk to him on Fridays about how much he loves the Lord, regardless of what he has, you know, and that God sustains him, and he gets to, you know, he finds ways to eat, and he find, you know, find shelter, and, and like to hear that, you know, that is like the example that Jesus wants us to see, you know, in, in this in this passage that you know, just because God, you know, we're not getting a house or food on our table doesn't necessarily mean God's not providing so providing for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to kind of be careful like how we measure yeah. God's provision. Yeah. Um, because you know if we look at like he was saying like the standards of our of, of, of our society of what we're in can distort how we view God's provision to be. Oh God's not providing if I don't have an apartment building um, to, to live in or God's not providing if I don't have this type of food on my table. So yeah, so just like Marissa, and then we. Um, I have so much to say in my head. I just don't know where yeah. it all will fit. So pardon yeah. me if I didn't get much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think to me this is like so profound as somebody who also mm-hmm. struggles with anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, what Bianca said that he's talking to the believers mm-hmm. struck me because I'm someone who likes to prepare, right? And I, I ha- my my intention is good. Like I want to do the right thing. But I, I, I get anxious about when, <laughs> when I'm going to do the right thing. So, or how I'm going to do the right thing. Or, you know, the whole preparation of it all. Am I prepared? Mm-hmm. How I don't have control over, if I don't have control over being prepared, mm-hmm. you know, I struggle. And I was reading um, verse 11, and it says, when they bring you to the, the synagogue and the magistrates and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or... Mm-hmm what you should say. Mm-hmm. And this is something that, for me, they must have been like, w- wait a second. Like, all mm-hmm. my life, or all, for all my years, I've been prepared to go in there and say the right things and do the right things and be the right way. And now you're telling me not to worry about that? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, look, I'm even shaking thinking about how I'm not, I, I can't be prepared? <laughs> you're telling me that I just have to not worry about being prepared? I'm freaking out! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, <laughs> uh, when you say something, uh, it's like there's so, there's things that you have no control of it. So worrying is it's not it's not I gonna. Know, I know it's like such a catch point too because mm-hmm. you don't have control and you shouldn't worry. It's just like <laughs> but, yeah. circle in my head. Like, you know what? Yeah. 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 Be cool. As we were talking yeah. yesterday, which I'm sure he's gonna teach, and I don't yeah. want to like give away his yeah. his yeah. thing. Um, which by the way, I didn't help at all. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Last last, last night, night I was like, Smell, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
she, she fell asleep, and I, I just, I went on, I went on. He's been studying all week, but now he works nights, so I don't, I don't get to see him. So yeah. I was like, on Saturday, this is what we're gonna do. Like, we're gonna. I just went on my own and just kept writing. So but go ahead, share. But what I was going to say is like the really like I see keep going. You guys are going to see because something that was really dope that stood out to me is like when you know who God is, mm-hmm. like when we start knowing God's intentions for us, which I know you're going to speak to in a little bit. All of a sudden, it's like no, actually, it's really going to be a lot easier to mm-hmm. be like, okay, home church, not a lot of home churches. <laughs> um, so he's gonna. I, I, I think we're going to get into that. But you go ahead. Um, yeah, in um, in what you call it, right? Now hold on, I'm, I'm a little confused because in verse eleven, right? Yeah. Uh-oh. No, let's just talk about it. Uh oh. He promised me. No, 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 because because if um, they'll be brought before the 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 they'll be brought to the synagogue and the authority, right? So it was um. The preparation, they have, they, I'm saying they're just giving what they, whatever they're sharing, they're sharing, you know, there's really no need for preparation in that. Are you saying that we don't need to prepare for anything or? No, I yeah. just mean in terms of being anxious. Like, I'm, I, it's just a personal thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's me, me to be prepared for whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Planner. Yeah. yeah, I'm a planner, so mm-hmm. it's, it's, if I don't plan, I don't feel in control, which means I freak out. But then what are they, what are they, there's some things that you can. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's things yeah, that you can control you that, uh, yeah. that I mean, it's up to you. Like, it's not like you're going to sit there and God's going to make it work like magic. Right. You, no, you got to yeah, play your card. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. excuse us yeah. from, right. from okay. our responsibility. Correct. Totally. Correct. Yeah. Which what that's one of the things. That's one of the things that RC Pro mentions. <laughs> like, this is not, <laughs> this passage here is not a. Permission. A, not a permission, but it's not like a free <laughs> get, get well kind of passage where you sit down and everything's going to rain down on you. It's not right, that. Right, I think he demonstrates yeah. that in the parable of the rich fool. Yeah. You can't just, you know, do work and then get to a certain point and be like, okay, I'm done. I don't have to mm-hmm. worry about anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we're going to move to, uh, let's see, 24 to 28. So, cause, consider the ravens, so they're neither uh, sowed nor reap, which will have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add a cubit to, this, to his stature? If you then are not able to, the, uh, to do the least, why are you anxious to the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither uh, toil nor spin. And yet I say, I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So what do you guys think about, what is he talking about within those passages there? What is so he, he goes from, he's going to provide for you uh, in, in those first two um, because he, he uh, gave you life, he uh, gave you salvation, and he's going to complete his work because that's what he says in, 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 other, in other verses. I think it's Philippians. That he's going to finish the work that he has for you. So now in these, what, what is he comparing it to you? Like how, what he thinks of you? Like what do you guys think in these verses? I think that now he went mm-hmm. beyond teaching and saying what he'll do to helping us look to see what he's actually doing, what is mm-hmm. present. So it's almost like, okay, I'm telling you not to worry when things happen in the future, maybe. Okay, but here's proof of what, mm-hmm. how it's been since the beginning of time. You know, I, I, I provide for these things, for mm-hmm. the ravens and I do this and I do that and and if I do that, what will I then do for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that was good. You, you, you were gonna I saw a hand or she moved. No? no? Okay. <laughs> Call girl, no I'm kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say I think he's going from like don't worry to like let me tell you your value or your worth, mm-hmm. like who you are to me. Yeah. You're much more valuable than animals. Than animals. Mm-hmm. 
and he feeds them every day. Mm-hmm. Like he's not he's saying like a raven. You, you don't see s- them. What am I gonna do for you? you? Yeah. You don't see a raven collecting his food. He just every day he goes eat the and he's done. Whatever, and then, yeah. So, what what are the point that it was like the uh the his sovereign uh priority? Yeah. What's priority in his in 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 his uh mind and you are you are created in his image. He gave you life. He gave you the breath the breath of life. So how how come he will not take care of you? You're more important than than the animals and the birds that that he created also. But you're more important. And I was thinking even to piggyback on our message, and um, we're talking about like the society and, and how we worry about everything. And um, <coughs> like I remember listening to a sermon of um, Paul Washer this morning, mm-hmm. and he's talking about you know being in Peru and how like. They're so dependent on God. Like he's like over there, if they eat, it's because of God. If they wake up another day, it's because of God. Like they have this trust in the Lord. That, and when you come over here, you're dependent. You know, you see people dependent on things on themselves. and on themselves and on other things. You know, other people versus like when you go to these countries mm-hmm. like that, where like these believers are literally like that's all they got, and that's like all they're dependent on is the Lord. So they know, like, if I eat, it's because the Lord provided. If I woke up, it's because the Lord provided me another day for me to wake up, you know? <coughs> Anyone else? just want to share a few verses uh, that, like, shows you what God thinks of you. Um, like I said, in Genesis 2-7, he breathed life into you. That's when he created Adam. In Genesis 1-27, uh, he made you in his own image. In Psalm 139-13, he need you in your mother in your mother's womb, and when you dis- and I was reading when when you deserve punishment in hell, he gave you John three sixteen, which that he gave it he gave you his only son, that if you believe in him he'll give you everlasting life. So, if he this is how much he cares for you, how much you are priority to him, right? That he just. Could have let you die to, to your sin, right? But he gave you eternal life. He gave you, he gave you uh, salvation, right? Do we have to read verse twenty-eight or no? Uh, twenty. Did yeah, I skip yeah. it? We yeah. Can we get to the? All right. The whole thing? So, also, yeah. So. So um. You see, if all of this mm-hmm. would not have had verse twenty-eight, mm-hmm. I think that it would have been easier for me to read. But it's like, you know, Jesus mm-hmm. never, he's just so perfect even with his words to make sure that he's saying, like I always try to make sure that I'm conveying what I'm thinking because I want people to understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And God is so perfect in that. And it's like, okay, no matter how we go about this to break it down, and to, he goes to the heart of the matter and to mm-hmm. what the problem mm-hmm. is. So the problem at the end of the day is that I have little faith. And that right there, man, you know, is like, there is just no other excuse other than that I have little faith. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm anxious or whenever I'm worried or whenever I'm not in control mm-hmm. and I'm not feeling right, it's because I have little faith. Mm-hmm. So that to me, man, is like. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, main topics that the pastor was teaching. Like, uh, the reason why Christian believers have anxiety is because yeah. a lack of faith. Like a faith in God, uh, understanding God and mm-hmm. how He works, because if you know, it, I mean, and that's why um, I think in one of the the other verse is like, uh, the more you, more and more you read in God, when you in, in in God's word, that's how you understand and, and you get a, a insight of how God works and how God thinks of you and how God, what what, like what He believes in you, like it's amazing. Um, I was gonna say mm-hmm. that um, the more like we stress ourselves, mm-hmm. the more like the less we have trust in God. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, like for an example, like I tend to worry about like not having enough money or not having enough time to do a certain thing, and it's like I know He's in control, mm-hmm. but like I still tend to stress myself out for like no reason. And, and I was going to say, well, um, I kind of agree with you, because a lot of Dominican Christians, they really, like, 
want to define you, like if you had this amount of money or this amount of clothes or <coughs> new sneakers that came out, it's like, you know, they just move away from you. And it's like, I don't, you know, I don't really, like if I want to be humble, I can. And if I want to keep the stuff that I have, then I can. I don't want to, you know, have all these stuff because it's not, it's like the more you have, the more you get, the less you have. Go ahead, Brian, you were gonna say something? Yeah, this is a great subject. If anybody feels that way. Correct, yeah. But um I think that the thing to keep in mind, for me anyway, is the balance of it. I think <coughs> the do not worry is tied to because as you said, Bianca, this is speaking to believers. The disciples, mm -hmm. yeah. And so there is sort of an expectation of the believer knowing what is incumbent upon him to do, right? And then beyond that is where the faith needs a little faith comes in. So as long as you're, as an individual, being diligent in the things that you ought to be doing as a believer, you can rest comfortably knowing that God has the rest versus what I've heard many times is like, I'm not going to worry about it because God's going to you know, I do nothing. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's what it's saying. Yeah, that's yeah. No, correct, yeah. Just to say that out loud, because I've just heard that lots of times. Mm -hmm. Never mind, no? Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know if this is really too much into it because sometimes I have an issue with keeping the six out of five cups because yeah. everybody struggles with it, so everyone's trying to like bend it toward what they're struggling with kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I also like to think about it as you are as special for the things that he listed, but the things that he listed also go through seasons. So like not to worry God will take care of you, but people walk out of that. And like don't worry, God will take care of you. But there's a time where it's really, you know, it's kind of like the season comes in and they wither away and mm -hmm. then they grow again. Mm -hmm. So it's like God will provide, but it is also a reminder that that doesn't necessarily give us free pass or that it's always going to be 100% mm -hmm. okay. Correct, yeah. Like they grow for a reason and mm -hmm. these things, things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of understanding all of that at the same time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's taking anything out of context, but that's kind of what's been true. Yeah, that's good because so, I mean, expected, like it's to be expected. Things are not always going to be perfect, but God is still saying, but I am telling you, do not be anxious. Mm -hmm. Like I am telling you, do not fret, you know? Um, and I like that you defined anxiety in the beginning because we're not talking about like, you know, excitement or enthusiasm. We're talking about a real fear, a real worry, mm -hmm. um, which we tend to do even in the midst of hardship, which is why I say like, he's like, because he also says, like, guys, you're going to be persecuted. Like, he also mm -hmm. leaves us with many warnings, mm -hmm. too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like, it's not, it's not going to be great. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be headed to the cross soon. Mm -hmm. And I'll be beat and humiliated and, you know, rejected. And it's, that's all going to come. But even in the midst of that, like, I have to go because someone greater is born, like, you know, than the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I keep going back to verse 23. Mm -hmm. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. I think it's important that we understand what God wants us to think of life and the body. What's the purpose of both? It's so that we're not anxious anymore. Like, what is the purpose? Mm -hmm. So here it tells us not to be anxious because of these things, because he's going to provide. But mm -hmm. what's the purpose? What purpose for our life and body? Mm -hmm. So we no longer have to think about being anxious because we know our purpose and what our end goal is. It's not food. It's not having money. So what is it? What are we using our body for? So I don't have the answer, but it's like, what's the purpose for this life? What's the purpose for our bodies? And I think that'll help our mentality a lot. I mean, but yeah, like that's the purpose. And I mean, through the Bible, I mean, if you read it, I mean, it's just to obey God and love God with all your heart, right? Mm -hmm. And he and through his commandments, make disciples of all nations. Uh, and he goes on and on and on. So. Um, so, yeah, if you have struggle, like, what's the purpose? I mean, God. Uh, and you should read this one. <laughs> 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 uh, go ahead, Angel. Yeah. 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 I think it will help uh, just yeah. to remember everything, everything that God has done in our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of serves as a reminder of, okay, we've got this. Mm -hmm. this uh, even though life can be really hard, but I think for me, for me, it helps, like, to not worry. It's like, oh, God, we're good in the past. If you get it now, like, mm -hmm. you won't. 
you're probably not gonna have any real work et cetera. And also stress, I think it blocks your mind to be because you can't you can't think. Think, yeah. You just mind boggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the reason I find this mm -hmm. particular subject interesting <coughs> is because um okay, so you know how all of us struggle with certain sins, right? Now yeah. you know, the mistake I think a lot of Christians <laughs> make <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the mistake I think a lot of Christians make um, is that they um, see a brother struggling in sin, and, you know, the book of James tells us sin is sin, right? But we, I think, tend in our fleshly nature to forget that, and so we'll say, okay, man, that brother over there who's struggling with fornication pornography or adultery or maybe murdering. Maybe the dude just wants to kill people sometimes or he struggles with not killing people sometimes, right? And then, you know, they'll sometimes look at, oh, but my problem is just gossip. You know, my problem is just, um, you know, backbiting or, you know, mm -hmm. things that we consider, uh, it's not that bad as like adultery, right? And so I think that we're worried. It's one of those things too where, you know, we tend to think, okay, like, you're worried about like food, like clothing, and or you're worried about work, you know. And we're like, oh, I don't struggle with that. Like, yo, God's gonna provide. But then when we look at ourselves with a microscope, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, but you worry about like weather, you know. You worry. I think everyone just has their worries, their mm -hmm. own worries, and I think that it's a mistake. I think sometimes that we make with thinking like, oh, you shouldn't struggle with that. It's almost like, well, you shouldn't struggle with rain. Well, it's going to rain or not. Some people, it's mm -hmm. like a phobia yeah. for some people about yeah. rain, <laughs> you know. And um, and it's just an environment, you know, from the top to the bottom, I think. Because then you look at this video. Because if we were to look at this video mm -hmm. on YouTube mm -hmm. a month from now, when we're stressing over something, <laughs> and then we hear ourselves yeah. saying, yeah. Hey, yeah. we should have to worry. Why yeah. do we just, you know, it's almost like, man, I know that, you know, and then, so just to put it into a perspective, it's like even like in a church, so a church is obviously on stage on a pulpit saying, you know, don't be of little faith, you shouldn't worry, and again, just to go from top to bottom, but then that same church, I can have a conversation with its leader, and they're saying, okay, yeah, I know what the word says we should do, but man, if we do that, there'll be nobody in our, in our service anymore, you know? Or, you know, I know what we should be teaching, but man, if we teach that, no one's going to understand what we're teaching and, mm -hmm. and everyone's going to leave, you yeah. know, or, dis or uh, discipline. I know a lot of churches struggle with discipline, yeah. right? <laughs> um, man, I can't, we can't bring someone in front of the church, you know, if they're, not, if they're not adhering to the brother who first went and then to two or three brothers who went. We can't take them in front of the church. Everyone's going to leave the church. They're going to get scared. You know, that fear yeah. mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm. That's right. And then that trickles down to the fear maybe of getting fired at work from the, now the sheep. You know, so... That's why it's silly when people are like, I know that the word says this, but you know. And you're like, no, there's no but. Like, the, the word says it, the end. Not you know what I mean? Like, God says it, that's it. Simple. And that's what's tough, though, the simplicity yeah. of it, yeah. right? Yeah. It's simple, right? But then, Angel, and you know that I love you, but <laughs> if Angel were to see this video a month from now, yeah. when he's stressing out over something, <laughs> and he's saying, it's simple, <laughs> and we know this, and that's just the complexity, yeah. I think, of Christianity, uh, of a Christian walk, cool. is our simple nature, and, you know, just it's just, it's such a complex, but, deep, no, that's Topic. a good point. You good know point I mean? to think about. But I do think it's simple. <laughs> of course. Okay, All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so we're gonna read twenty nine through thirty one right now. So we're gonna break that down. Uh, twenty nine, and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor what, and have an anxiety, uh, anxious mind, for all these things that nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Wow. So seek the kingdom of God. What do you guys, what do you guys think about those passages there? <laughs> Joshua. 
interesting. Because yeah. it's just like, he's talked about all these material things, mm-hmm. and then um, he kind of just got, and he kind of said, this is your priority. Like, even, you know, he, God shows his priority over, like, us over the animals, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Um, he shows us, you know, not to worry, to, you know, put God first over, over all these things. And then, but most importantly, God says, focus on the spiritual, like, what... The, 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 con- the condition of the heart yeah. and what we desire over everything else. And when it comes to anxiety, I feel like, um, well, personally, that, that's something that um, I'm always dealing with. Like, you know, God is my heart, like, for you. You know, I'm always mm-hmm. anxious. Like, okay, like, when I'm afraid of the next time I'll be tempted. Like, will I fall to that? Like, I, I struggle with that, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, even God, God is even telling me not to worry about those things because he's always <laughs> providing a way of escape. He's always helping us. <clears throat> You know, to turn away from it, but you know, in a in a Christian walk, that's like, that's one of the things that, you know, is in our focus. You know, staying away from sin. As much as mm-hmm. it is about serving Christ, it's like, God, I'm also trying not to go back to what you know, my my human nature, you know, wants to do. Mm-hmm. So you know that that anxiety, you know, all that, and it, it permeates. It goes through all you know your 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 daily life. It affects your daily life when you're always stressing about not sinning. Yeah. And, so yeah, right here, he knows that you need those things, like those, mm-hmm. the uh, food and drink to mm-hmm. live. So, and he said not that the world, that's how they seek for, that's what they, <coughs> that, that's what they want. But you knowing as a believer that God will provide those things, don't, don't, don't seek for those things. Don't, don't uh, follow uh, the things of the world. I'm sure like in other verses, also in, in the New Testament, that he said, don't don't seek uh, things of the world, uh, just things of the spirit, things right. of God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that uh, R.C. Sproul wrote down here was, and I wrote it down: Our Christian life should be focused on God and His Word. And that's what I, I was saying earlier. The more and more we do this, the more we will uh, be aware of Him. We will we will know Him. We'll be uh, know His presence. We know Him, God. We know uh, more deeply than just uh, things that are around you, right? Uh, so what, what's, what's your heart looking for? Is, is, is your heart looking for things of this world, uh, things that are you store here, things that uh, could crumble at any time, yeah. or the kingdom of God that is everlasting mm. and eternal, right? Anyone else? Yeah. That's um, my struggle for words and all yeah. things like that. <laughs> Christian, that became my life first. But the one Matthew to seek God first and His righteousness every day when I'm every morning I pray yeah. and always remind myself look for God first. But you don't know what's happening every day, yeah. so, so I guess we got we got to set our priority, right? Yeah. What, what what's and what's more important, God. right? Go ahead, Judy. So I remember that a couple of years ago I was over. What was it? I was waiting for some flour about my problem. It was bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I came across Matthew 6.23, I think. Six is about the same thing, yeah, yeah. And it was like God slapped me in the back of the head. Like, mm-hmm. what is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Stop worrying mm-hmm. so much. I mean, it was bad. I would talk to my neighbor, drive my neighbor crazy. <laughs> and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. And God said, what is wrong with you? Stop. And you know what? Ever since I stood focused on that, mm-hmm. I don't really, I still worry, but I don't worry like, oh, my God, I, I'm fragile. I have to. Tell the world what's going on and whatever. Mm-hmm. I gotta go on Facebook and tell everybody. Oh my God, this is what I'm worried about. Please pray for me. I don't do that because I know that God has my back. Mm-hmm. And dealing with this illness for 16 years, mm-hmm. I've been I've seen everything. I've been in a coma. I've been in everything. And I said, you know what? God has my back. Mm-hmm. I defied everything. Like God doesn't even mm-hmm. talk to me anymore. They're like, this is gonna happen to you. This is gonna happen to you. I'm like, okay. And it doesn't. And He's like, you know what? We have nothing to say to you. A couple of years ago, they had given me a medicine that would shrivel up my ovaries. They said, you're never going to have any more children. And it's church season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we can't say anything to you anymore. Okay. You know, here's this child. He's nine years old right now. So it's like, you know, I um, I truly do depend on God. I really do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, um, um, okay, I just had a thought. <laughs> the cause of overthinking kills me. <laughs> um, okay, so I was going to say that I feel like he wants us to trust him because we tend to worry so much that we lose track of his trust. And um, I was going to give an example from mm-hmm. verse 29. Yesterday, I was 
all over the place. Like, we had, I was dancing for the banquet, and I was just all over the place. Like, I didn't eat anything at all. I didn't mm-hmm. drink anything. <coughs> and I was like, okay, I don't know, like, the food was already gone. So I was like, okay, I don't know what to eat. And then I'm thirsty, mm-hmm. so I was like, I'm like all over the place. Not noticing that there's a water fountain there. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I have money, so I, I can buy water. And then my bag is in a, a room, it's locked. It's locked. Like, the room is locked. And then I'm just like, <laughs> I'm stressing out just for something to drink. And then I'm like, okay, let me just get water from the water fountain. Mm-hmm. So um, that that's the thing. Like, we tend to worry what we have there already. Mm-hmm. But then we just overthink what we, like, need or want yeah. whenever we need it. Gotcha. So, and one of the things that uh, R.C. Sproul also mentioned was that about seeking the kingdom of God, like, how does that look like? How, like, mm. as a Christian, you do that? And, and that's two, the solution. Yeah. <laughs> so two of the things that he mentioned was also, like, um, what was it? Uh, sanctification was one part of those. Mm. And uh, discipleship. Discipleship as, as a believer. You need discipleship. Uh, you need to be um, um, more and more in the word of God and also um, just getting rid of that old self because you, when you worry, you are just thinks of, of a non-believers of, that are uh, worrying or thinking about things of, of this right, what happened right now. We have, we have to set, minded. yeah, we have, to set, we have to set our mind mm-hmm. of, for the, king, the kingdom of God, things of God. You were going to say something? I'm going to say, I mean, yeah. that's the solution. We, yeah. we're, we're like, you know, we worry, we worry, we worry, but the answer is eat first the kingdom of God, right? Yeah. And like mm-hmm. when you think about that, like really think first, just two seconds, like the kingdom of God, like that's promised to us, you know? Like Lou and I were listening to a sermon by Piper yesterday, and he was saying like God is excited about giving you his mm-hmm. kingdom. Like God is, which comes into the n- next few mm-hmm. verses, but like God is, God wants to give you his kingdom. And so if we fixate our minds on seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, then like all these things are added to you. Like then we really wouldn't be worried. We wouldn't yeah. be people of anxiety. And like in things that you don't have control of it, like the Bible says that through prayer and and uh, and I guess uh, offering to God, those things like that you can't control is just that's the way to do it. You go through prayer and you just talk to God about it. You don't I guess wrap your mind about it because you. It says that there, you're not gonna gain anything. It says you're not gonna gain any stature by worrying. Like, if you see it, if you worry, it doesn't add or solve the problem. It's just causing damage to yourself. Mm-hmm. So through prayer, that's how uh, you things that you can control. Yeah, you have to play your part. But things that you have no control <coughs> of, it, that's how you mm-hmm. give it up to God. You give it to prayer. Um, so we're gonna go to the last uh, few verses. There's 32. Um, do not fear, little flock, for it's your father's God, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourself money bags that do not grow old. A treasure in heavens, in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Mm-hmm. And it's always it's crazy because in these final verses, I mean. Um, it's, it's, uh talks about the, uh, a word down here. So, so so important to God to give us gladly the kingdom of God. Um, I wrote down that He doesn't give you a little bit uh, for a little bit of time. He gives you He gives you all all the kingdom of God. And uh, I was thinking like, what what what's the kingdom of God is? What is it? I mean, through different verses uh, uh, mentioned in the Bible, it it, it, um, it attached to, to that uh, scripture. But I, I wrote down the, the broadly speaking, it is the rule of an eternal God, a sovereign God over all universe. And that's where in Psalm 103, 19, that's where the Lord established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules for overall. So you, you are part of that, like under God, because he, he gave you salvation you're going to take part of that. And that's one thing that we got to set in mind, uh, right, to, to think about. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have? Yeah. So I think one of the things that's hard for me to wrap my mind around mm-hmm. is even 
in the word, man. Do not fear the flock, for it is your father's good pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sharing on Thursday in your um, in your Bible study in your house that uh, one of the things that I just realized now, like I mean, like a week ago, that I struggle with is that I don't know what it is, like Father God, you know, like a Father God, like God loves you so much. I've always been more of um, like coaches and men in my life who give me rules to follow and I'll follow them to the best that I can, you know? Discipline, you know, structure, you know, not like a father like to, to hug you and kiss mm -hmm. you and stuff and like <coughs> caress you. That, you know, that is just like alien to me, right? So I didn't realize till last <coughs> week that I don't see God that way <coughs> either. And that's not right because he describes himself as a loving father. Mm -hmm. But I was just seeing him as like my Lord and master, not as my loving father. All right. Were you here last Sunday? No. All right. So he was talking about the prayer, uh, like when he was teaching his uh, disciple how to pray. And we define like what, what kind of father, prayer one was like, he's intimate with you. And then, then the problem was, okay, even though he's intimate, he's close to you, you have to respect him. So it's like all the part of, of the prayer that Jesus was teaching us. And it's good that you brought that. I'm like, can you yeah. say something? Yeah. So I am still, you know, like reading more to mm -hmm. understand it more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it helps that I'm a father now. And I think like, man, but yeah, when my girls do something wrong, I mean, I'll say something to them in the moment. But as soon as he says, you know, I'm sorry, daddy. That's it. It's like, it's <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? my wife will be like, no, are you, do you understand? And I'm just like, yo, she said sorry already. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, Older daughter, she's a freshman in college, and the father said something, don't take the rest spoon in the rest of the food, you know, something like that. And she just responded to her and to him really disrespectfully in front of the, um, all of the guests and everything. So he took her to the side. became so bad, the father's like, just tell me, I'm getting my, I'm resigning your job on Monday and let everything just go out to the face of God. And that all he wanted was that word, I am your father. That's all that mm -hmm. father wanted to hear. And he was like, well, he's not allowed to come in here for his intimate thing, so you know, he just needs to get out of the house right now. so many values that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking everybody to pray for this family mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. becoming a very 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 like especially in the light of what how to pray and why to pray and what we learned in the last class this family needs love needs to know love okay, sorry, and sorry is a word that can Yeah. Well, I think that's one of like the things as a non-believer when you repent, it's not just yeah saying sorry, but you gotta turn turn away or just so that situation then. No, we try yeah. we try our best uh, to come to the table, but 
Khan, his father Dan, mm. but even his mother, who had just come for this housewarming function from India and everything, and she could not come. Right. Okay. Um, kind of just going back to like seeking first his kingdom. Can I read Psalm eighty four? Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> you said, um, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. And I just feel like this verse speaks to what the king of kingdom is, right? Mm-hmm. Or this um, chapter. <clears throat> how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yet faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At her altars... O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Praise, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart in whose heart are the highways of Zion. As they go um, through the valleys of Baca and make it the place of springs, the early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold. Our shield, O God, look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked men. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. What's the one you Psalm 84. All right, so... Uh, as we close, I just wanted to, anybody else, before we close down, want to uh, say something, want to uh, share any ideas, anything that they <coughs> capture from these verses or anything like that? I think it's always encouraging because mm-hmm. God never gives a pass instruction. Mm-hmm. Like, he never, ever says, do this. All right, figure it out. Like, he never, he never does that. Whether it's right away after. Or maybe in a different story, his answer is what we had talked about another story. But it's never like, leave all of your possessions. Mm-hmm. I'm joking. <laughs> and then you're standing there like, and now what? Like, it, you never have to ask yourself, and now what? Mm-hmm. He always gives mm-hmm. it to you. So when he says, um, like, fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, that's your and then. Like, do not have anxiety. Do not fear will cover you because there's always a but or because or and then so I think there's hope in um, you know my, my mother always used to paint the picture don't be so focused on dusting one part of your house if your whole rest of your house is burning down behind you like if you're so focused on your anxiety or you're so focused on one thing and, and being stressed or whatever that may be you miss the bigger picture or you miss the fact that he's providing you with all of these things or he's 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 telling you to fear not because he will give you the kingdom. Like Bianca said, I mean, one of the beautiful things is that we, we know that that's promised to us already. So we don't have to wait for someone to come up to us and go, it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. God, like, that's something that we know. It's a truth that we know. So I just think it's mm-hmm. awesome in going through all these things within Luke. It's never mm-hmm. open-ended. Yeah. Like, he always bookends a thought. So you never have to second-guess mm-hmm. something. That was talking about like um, that we get to share in God in Christ's kingship, right? Like I think it was MacArthur. He yeah. was saying like we get to share, like we get to sit at the throne. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we get to reign with Him. That yeah. Yeah. we're talking about the Creator of heaven and earth, the one who spoke the world into existence. You know what I'm saying? Like let there be light, and there was light. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that same God is our Father. Like it's that's like, amazing. and that's. Unbelievable yeah. because that's his kingdom and he's willing it to give it to you in, through inheritance yeah. through Christ, right? Isn't that uh, that's amazing? I just can't, that yes, yeah. that, like, that's mind boggling. Like, yeah, yeah, God, like, help me to understand that. Yeah, because and kind of like what you were, you were talking about, about like recognizing God as a father and stuff, mm-hmm. and like that's something that I struggle because it's you know, there's something that I've been asking for God for so long. Like I know He's been there through every single tragedy and thing that happened in my life, but it's just like, you know, how can I cannot gra- like I can't fully grasp it. It's so hard. Yeah. You know, and just understanding like our position.
position to God and that we are his children. And, what, and I'm always encouraging when I'm talking to my girlfriend about that, like, you know, we're his children, you shouldn't stress, you shouldn't worry. And then I, I look at myself, I'm like, why am I, like, but here I am, stressing, <laughs> like, take your own advice. You know, that's like, this, that could be like the title of my biography, but, yeah. you know, I have to be able to, you know, just recognize that, like, recognize my position to God. All right, so in closing, this is what I wrote down, I mean, after reading and studying. So anxiety will be present in a, in a Christian's uh, life if that individual has a misunderstanding of God's sovereign uh, provision, as we talked in the beginning, his priority, what God um, thinks of you, and seeking other things instead of God. In general, like uh, Ernesto said, it's a, little, a lack of faith, lack of faith in God, lack, lack uh, uh much trust in God that he, his promises that you, you don't believe them, uh, that you are kind of uncertain because you feel attached to the world, you feel that old person is still uh, lingering there. So we're closing, I, not just this uh, passage talks about anxiety, I was just looking for, and even David, King David was one of the biggest <laughs> Uh, warrior, because in Psalms, in all the Psalms, yeah, that's what yeah. he mentioned all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to give you four verses, if you guys could read it. Um, you don't mind uh, getting Philippians 4, 6 through 7, you, uh, Psalms 55, 22, Ernesto, uh, Psalm 94, 19, and Judy, can you do John 14? 94, 19? And 14, verse 27. So, Kenneth, whenever you, uh, let me see if they're ready. Are you guys ready? Ernest, are you there already? Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, okay, so go ahead, Kenneth. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go ahead, you. 55, <clears throat> Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Am I going to read verse 1? Verse 1? Yeah, go ahead. I should have read verse 1 first, because it's your point. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan, moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring down trouble upon me and in wrath they hate me. He's so worried there. Yeah. And then cast your burden mm -hmm. on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Mm -hmm. Steve. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. And Judy, uh, 14, 20, uh, 27. 14, 27. Mm -hmm. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And those were his last words to the disciple after he showed to them uh, the second time after he uh, came out of the tomb. So. Just, uh, I, I hope that you guys are encouraged uh, that uh, through these verses and that you will uh, keep in mind and those things that, of those promises that God has for you, um, that he, he loves you so much, he, uh, he gladly gives you the kingdom of God, and that he, you are a priority to him. You are number one. And, um, and in, your part, you have, in your part, you have to seek, seek his kingdom. That's what, what he leads you. Amen. Uh, anyone wants to close in a word of prayer? Louis? Okay. Louis. I'll give you Louis. Right. He's pretty quiet over there. Turn the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this day, Lord. We just thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for your word, Lord, and what we learned this morning, Lord, that um, we may apply it to our lives. Lord, we just pray as uh, we depart from here, Lord, and service, Lord, that um, you just bless the speaker, Lord, that they may be able to uh, speak the word of God. Lord, we just uh, thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.